Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Helen here with Droid Life. So after what seems like an extended period of time away from YouTube, we're back this time talking about Android Wear, and in particular, the Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow update that's rolling out to all Android Wear devices. I have the update here on my Moto 360 second gen. It's also seems to be widely rolling out to the first gen and 360 Sport as of today. We haven't seen a lot of reports, though, that it's hitting the Huawei watch and the Tag watch and the Zen watches and the G watches and Watcher Banes, though. By the time you watch this, it may start popping up there. Uh, we wanted to walk through this update, though, because it's a pretty big one. It's a jump from Lollipop to Marshmallow, which is, you know, the current version of Android, and there's a number of new things worth talking about. So uh, the first thing, though, is something I can't show you. So one of, one of the, and I don't mean that in a weird way, I just, it, this doesn't have the functionality. So one, one thing the update's doing is, is, essentially activating external speakers that are on select watches. So the Huawei watch, and I believe the Zen watch too have external speakers, uh, which you probably didn't know about. They were, they were inactive and you couldn't use them. This update will activate those. So with an external speaker, obviously you can take calls and hear audio or potentially listen to music if you want, or I would imagine also receive notifications with sound on your wrist. Uh, so again, the 360 and all most of the watches don't have external speakers. So I can't show that to you, but that is something. And I'd imagine they'll all have speakers in the future. So uh, in terms of what I can show you, though, the rest of the update includes things like new language support, like Mandarin, Cantonese, Indonesian, Polish, Dutch, and Thai. We also have doze mode. So if, if you're familiar with Android 6.0 on a phone, doze on a watch essentially works the same way. So what doze is, uh, it, it, it tries to recognize the fact that your device is maybe sitting on a table, not doing anything. It's recognizing there's no motion or movement. So when it does that, it then sort of shuts down into a low power state, sort of a sleep mode in order to conserve energy or power or battery. And so it does that on phones. It now does that on watches. So if you can't get to a charger or something like that, this could potentially make your watch last a little bit longer. So doze mode, it makes sense that it's here again because it is included in Android 6.0. Um, so in terms of other stuff, though, we have a new screen dimming gesture. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. We do have control over app permissions now with 6.0. Again, that's an Android 6.0 feature, so it's no surprise that it's here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of new wrist gestures I'll, I'll show you. I guess it's a whole bunch, but at least there's a couple new ones I'll show you. Uh, you can now manually set the date, time, and time zone. It seems odd that you can do that before, but that is something you can do now with uh, Android 6.0. Uh, there's also Blue Bluetooth headset audio improvements, some other performance improvements and things like that. Those could be device specific, but that's what Motorola is telling us to expect. So uh, let's jump into some of this stuff though and, uh, and see exactly what we're working with. So the first place I'll take you is into settings just to show you kind of what we're working with. Uh, if we scroll all the way down in settings into about, you will see here, this is build number MEC23G. The M obviously stands for Marshmallow. But if we go down to versions and do this touch to view, you'll see that it is Android 6.0.1. So your watch, depending on what it is, could have a different build number, but in the end, you want to be on 6.0.1. Uh, scroll back here a couple pages, and if we scroll up to permissions, this is the new section where you can control app permissions. So if we scroll up, say, to phone, uh, tap on phone, you'll see contacts, SMS are both here as permissions that have been granted. If you tap on those, in some situations, you'll get a warning that actually says, if you deny this permission, basic features of your device may no longer function as intended. So it's sort of up to you if you want to deny or just cancel out of that. Uh, there are some apps, like I believe Moto Body is one, where you can actually just enable and disable things and you won't get that warning. So clearly the device doesn't think those functionalities are are necessary. So you can sort of swipe through those, but you'll see these for all of your apps. You can see I've got Runkeeper there and Swarm and Time Store and all that stuff. So that's where you control your permissions. Uh, if we scroll up again just a little bit, here's date and time settings. Uh, so you can see at this time, I have automatic date and time pulling from my phone as well as the time zone. If you don't want that automatically pulling from your phone, this is where you would do it. So instead of sync from phone, I could choose off. And if I swipe back, you'll see now I have a way to manually set the time zone. I don't necessarily need to do that. So I'm gonna switch that back to sync from phone. Uh, and that's pretty much it in terms of settings. So if I go back to the start though, I did wanna show you quickly this sort of off on gesture that's now included. So you guys know that in the past there was, well, I, th I believe from day one, basically a gesture that if you turn, turned your watch into sort of the viewing angle where you'd be turning it towards you to look at it, um, the screen would come on. And so that's not necessarily new. But what is new is Google enabled this motion. So when you go back away from the viewing angle, your, your display then automatically kicks off and turns back into ambient mode. So 
when you look at it, it turns on. If you kick it right back off, it goes right back into that sleep mode. So in the past, it used to take a number of seconds in order for that to happen. The idea here is that you look at your watch, maybe look at the time and raise and drop your wrist to your side. And rather than waiting for that to time out in ambient mode to kick in, just by tilting it away from that viewing angle makes it tick right back off. So it should conserve energy throughout the day. You can see I just tick it away and there it goes right back off. So kind of a nice little addition there. Uh, so I'm going to slap this back on wrist so we can walk through potentially some of the gestures here, show you what's new. All right, so we flip this up here and the screen comes on, you guys know that. Uh, and you guys also probably know that if we do this sort of gesture, we can sort of go back and forth between cards. That's not necessarily new. Uh, what has changed though, is you can swipe down and get into settings. You can actually keep swiping through those settings. Um, but then what Google also did is they added this sort of raise and lower motion along with a shake motion um, in order to get you um, in, in other directions and to activate things and things like that. So I'll show you that if we swipe back down the settings and we just keep swiping through settings and we get over here to the actual settings icon, if I just lower my wrist really quickly, that actually selects that. Uh, so now I'm actually in settings and I can scroll through settings if I want. Um, there's gestures, always on screen, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You can see all of this stuff, right? So I can control all of that. Um, if I go into something like, or I want to go into something like font size, again, I just sort of drop it down and that should select that. And then in here I could, you know, choose large, um, or I could choose normal or small or whatever. And then when I want one, I just sort of drop it down and it should select that. Um, I can also though, if I'm in something like font size, if I just sort of raise my wrist up like that, it should go back a page. So if I raise up again, raise up again, I'm now back to the start. So sort of down and up in order to go forward or backwards, if that makes sense. Uh, so you can do this in cards as well. So if we swipe up here, so here's an NBA alert. So if I drop that down, switches over and then I have the option to open on phone. So I can actually go down again and then it just selected that. I don't know if you saw that little blurb there, but it did actually select that. So that's how you can select things. You can go forward and select things when you're looking at cards. So we'll just continue to swipe through these here. So here's another one. So I'm gonna go down and there's my camera in my garage and then I can open on phone. If I wanna go backwards, it's just raise up, raise up and then we're back. So we can keep spinning through these things uh, and going essentially wherever we want. So here's some tweet stuff. Uh, the one cool thing that they've added then after this is if you just say you're deep in a card, your Google Now cards or something like that, you can go all the way back to home by just doing this sort of wiggly shake and it takes you all the way back from wherever you are at the bottom of your card stack all the way back up to the top. So those are essentially the new gestures. Um, they take a little bit of getting used to, but it's kind of a nice way to navigate with if you only have or you don't have a hand free and you just need to use your wrist, you can sort of do a lot of stuff there. So, uh, uh, oh, also, I believe if you're right here, you can raise up, no, go down and get into settings. There you go. So if you're on the main page, you can actually swipe through um, into settings and into um, your app page if you want. And then you could scroll in and scroll in and go from app to app. And then if you want to launch one, like say the alarm, you just go down and then now I'm in an alarm. And so I could actually uh, set a new alarm. So how about 358? Yes, yes. And there we go. I just set an alarm without ever touching anything. So uh, you probably won't always need to use these gestures, but um, you can see how it could come in handy from time to time. So anyways, that's the new Android 6.0 update that is rolling out to all Android Wear watches. So if you haven't seen it yet, just keep an eye out. Otherwise you can always go into your settings. Yes, I know this is the long way. Scroll down to about and then scroll down into system updates and tap that and it'll tell you if there's an update or not. So if you guys have comments, questions, or want us to check anything else out, we can certainly do that. We are Droid Life. Peace.